we're going to roll the clock back 20 years. That's what I'm showing you. Probably I should do that too. But um, yeah, we're going to roll the clock back 20 years and look at the first generation ADSL modem. The first one I ever had. I waited years to get this thing. And uh, it was such a big upgrade from the dial-up that we had. Let's take a look at this old 3Com ADSL 1 modem. I still remember the day. It was March 1st, the year 2000. I had been on the waiting list for two years to get high-speed internet installed at my house. And I had to race home and sit at home when I should have been at the hospital because my son was just two days old. And I should have been at the hospital with my wife, but I had waited two years to get ADSL installed and there was no way I was missing that appointment. This is my original modem. All 1.5 megabit download, 512K upload, all that speed. But hey, compared to what we were dealing with before, uh, 56K dial-up modem, I was on cloud nine to get this thing. Uh, this modem has been retired for so many years I can't even remember. It wouldn't work today if I tried because the standards have changed over the years. This would have been DMT1 and believe it or not the central office that serves my area which I actually work at now. I don't work at the office. I work out in the field but I, I'm dispatched out of that office. They still have some of the equipment that would have worked with this. The old Main Street uh, uh, DMT1 um, ports where there was eight eight ports per card. How times have changed because they went from the DMT1 standard to DMT2 which had then they went to I think it was 24 uh, ports per card and then to 48 ports per card and then it was it was ADSL um, DMT2 and then uh, DMT2 plus which was the the era of the stingers we took a stinger apart one of the old decommissioned ones I took one of those apart years ago when it was in the recycle bin I brought it home took it apart and sent it back um, but there are still some old ports that would have supported this thing sitting at the central office they've been depowered they're just sitting there taking up space they haven't had power applied to them for probably 10 years but they haven't removed that equipment yet. They removed the stingers, but they're still old uh, Main Street cabinets with the old DMT1 cards and some DMT2 cards sitting at the office. And they're probably still connected to the frame. It's just that they've been completely phased out. Anyway, through the migration of ADSL, we went from DMT1 to DMT2 to ADSL2, then ADSL2+, plus, then VDSL, and then VDSL2, and the current and last VDSL standard that we are using is VDL2 Plus, which uh, will support up to, I think it's 150 megabits, something like that. Uh, well, it can do 150 megabits on a two lines on bonded loop. Uh, anyway, I figured, hey, let's take this thing apart and see what this old modem looks like inside because I don't think I've ever, ever done a video tearing one of these things apart and I don't think I've ever torn this thing apart. So let's take a look and see what makes this thing tick. So you're gonna notice on this, it's a home connect ADSL modem ethernet and uh, it's made in USA cool huh you don't see that much anymore again this is 20 years ago this is the year 2000 when I got this thing I remember there was some dip switches on the back that they the uh, the lady that came out to install it and incidentally she's on my crew um, she's been with the company for years and I actually work out of the same out of the same uh, district so uh, she's actually on my crew but um, I think she's been with the company about 40 years now but she showed up to install this thing and I had waited around all morning and to say I was so excited to get this thing uh, anyway uh, they said she said like I remember saying don't plug anything into there I guess that was for diagnostics LAN port and the phone port and that was all there is to it uh, this thing here doesn't even have any screws holding it together. So we're just going to pry this thing apart. And what a lot of components in such an old modem. Let's get a closer look. First thing you'll notice that this thing was shielded up the yin yang. They had shielding on the top, they had shielding on the bottom. It was in a metal case, the base of its metal. 
and have the shielding on the top. Let's remove this screw. This thing's going to be heading for recycling when I when I get done with this today. It's not going to be, uh, I don't think, going back together. It's kind of useless. As I say, it doesn't work. And I'm surprised it's still sitting here. I just I just happened to be going through a box and uh, had a bunch of old crap in it. And this was in it. So it's. Uh, I figured I'd just drag this thing out and take it apart. And then, uh, and then I'll send it off to recycling. So the circuit board is only a single-sided board. Everything's on the top. There's no components that you can see mounted on the bottom of it whatsoever. Just got a base on it. It's a plated board, plated through board. It's got some connections on the bottom here, but they're, they aren't connected to the shield. So this is a shield on the bottom here. It looks like it does a few connections. There's a, there's, there are some through hole connections to this ground, but a lot of them are not connected. You'll see here that there's actually a, a space around where the, the plated through solder connections go. That's because it's a multi-layer board. So there's actually traces inside. You can see this one here. You can see there's a, that's a trace inside. There's another layer of plating internal. And this is probably a four or maybe a six layer board, as you can see there, to connect all the parts together, all the all the actual chips together. Uh, let's get a closer look at the the chips on this thing. Oh, it's got some Chinese made parts. It's got some surface mounted caps. Probably pretty good. Probably pretty good. Uh, quality too. But uh, what do we got on here as far as chips go? Got a lot of analog devices chips. Analog devices. That one and that one. And this one over here and this one here. What do we got on this one? This is going to be a, a T-SOP of some type. That'll hold the firmware I'm sure. I don't know what this one here is. This is this is probably a this is probably a DC to DC converter. I'm thinking. Yeah, this is going to be a transformer. That that's going to be the regulator. LM twenty five eighty five is it? Yeah, twenty five eighty five S. So this is going to be a a switch mode regulator, and this is going to be a transformer. I'm sure. And that's confirmed because we can actually see the transformer winding right there. Uh, some memory. So here's a close-up of some of the memory chips. And here's our pulse. That's a transformer. Here's It's got one BGA chip on it. This one here is a Motorola chip. What's that number on there? XPC850SRZT50B. That's going to be the main the main processor and it's a BGA chip as you can see got a Korean LSI chip little crystal analog devices and a lot of these are going to be custom chips that were made specifically for this application It's going to be a flash memory, U10. Same with this one here, a TSOP, or type of flash memory. This side of the board is going to be where the, the, the ADSL circuitry lived here to modulate and demodulate the telephone, the line here. We've got some transformers here to isolate, some capacitors to isolate. Interesting if you look at this one here, it's it's a product revision, no number written on here. Three column copyright 1999. As I say, I got it in 2000, so this was this was state of the art back then. Oh, there's a little button switch back here. I wonder what that was for. Probably to reset it, and another switch over here. Uh, that switch was, is that power? What does it say on the back here? Was it labeled? Uh, no. Hey, a reset button. And this other one here, this one was marked 
uh, MDI slash X. So I would imagine that that and the dip switches on the back here could probably configure this thing for different flavors of ADSL because uh, there was different types of ADSL that it would have been capable of operating with. Uh, DMT1 was uh, st stood for discrete multi-tone and that was just one of a couple different standards that were around at the time. This was long before I was in the telecom business, before I went to work for the phone company. When this was out, I was still in the TV repair business, so I didn't really study too much about what was going on as far as uh, as far as internet went. Uh, we had basically one choice at the time, which was the cable guys, which gave us uh, two megabits down, and uh, I think it was 128k up. It was pretty sad. Um, I had a hate on for the cable company at the time. I had nothing to do with the local cable company because I just absolutely despised the company. And that was a personal reason because when I got out of college, I worked for the, I, I, I've mentioned this, I think before, but my field of study was not electronics in college. It was actually uh, television production. And I did an internship at the local, the local community station, which just happened to be owned by the cable company in the area. And um, I was doing exactly what I was told to do by my superior. And my superior told me to do something that was beyond the scope of my job. And, you know, being, I think I was, I don't know, 19 or 20, you know, uh, how old I've been, maybe 20, 19, maybe 19. Um, but, you know, being the intern, I was doing what I was told. And I did exactly what I was told. And then when the fit hit the shan, so to speak, my direct supervisor knew that uh, he'd end up with a day in the park and he opened, and he had openly admit that uh, I did what I was told to do. So he just played dumb and said that I did it on my own and the company cut me loose. And because of that, I had a hate on for that company. And I never, ever, I wouldn't even buy cable TV from them. I wouldn't buy internet from them. I put up with dial-up internet because I did not want to deal with the cable company. I was that, I was still that pissed off at them. This, this happened in 19, uh, what year was it? 1983, I think was when they asked me. So I would have been 20 at the time. It was 19, it was summer 1983. And uh, yeah, they, uh, or was it 82? It's a long time ago. Anyway, it's a long time ago. Anyway, uh, I, I never, I never ever, bought anything from the cable company and I put up with slow internet on dial-up until ADSL came out and this is the modem that I got all these years later this thing probably still works but uh, obviously the network that it was operating on is long retired and I know the, the current network that I'm on I'm still on on VDSL myself uh, it's it will be retired it's it is being retired now I'm still I'm just a holdout I haven't switched over to fiber but um, everybody is now going fiber and uh, the technology just you know, marches on and everything gets smaller and faster and better but here's a look at the first generation of ADSL modem and I still think after all these years it's actually still pretty cool to look at this thing Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a look at this old ADSL modem, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one real soon. I got a couple of repairs that I got to work on. I just figured I would show you guys these two uh, last two items. So I just figured I'd show you guys the uh, teardowns of these things first, and then we'll we'll get back on to some repairs. We'll catch you later.